I may not know why your father did what he did, but I know who he is. He lied to me, and then he disappeared, and I want to know the truth. Obviously, Hannah and Bailey's relationship is so, I mean, that's the love story, right? That's the integral part of the show. What about Jen and Ngauri? What about the two of them together was like, yeah, those are the characters I created and the relationship that I created. So, you know, it was really an unfolding in a way. Like, you know, even their body language toward each other shifted as the series moved on. It was so organic. With Ann Gowry, she actually put herself on tape and sent it in. And as soon as I saw her, she was wearing this hoodie and her hair was pulled back. And I turned to Josh and I thought, oh my God, I think that's Bailey. They just moved toward each other in this really organic way. And what I will say too, is that what I'd seen in television and read in books is when you have that triangulation of a stepdaughter and a stepmother and a husband, father, usually there's competition. And what I really wanted this relationship to look like is for that triangulation to be different. What defines you? There's nothing I wouldn't do for my daughter. The one thing they had in common was that they knew how much this man loved both of them, that there was no competition. In fact, that was the only thing that joined them together. In all other ways, they were distance. So the distance that they had to cross wasn't about competition. It was about understanding, which really made it a love story. When Jen signed on, we invited her into that same process and we literally sat in the backyard. And Jen not only is a wonderful actor, but she is game and she is a team player and she's a great leader. And so she was, yeah, I'm there. And she, we sat in the backyard and we read all the scripts together. And then we had Ann Gowry join us, right? And so they got to know each other a little bit in that moment. I think there's something really special there. And I'd like to think it all started, you know, sort of uh, underneath our, our pine tree. Yeah. I was a terrible teenager, teenage girl, and I didn't have like a quarter of the stuff that <laughs> Bailey has going on for her. It's hard sometimes to love us at that point in our lives, but we obviously, we do love Bailey. Talk to me about that balance between being sullen teen, a lot of stuff going on, and also just trying to kind of get through the day with her. Bailey's headspace is, is a is a tough one to be in, I think, because she's so, she's so headstrong. She absolutely believes everything, every decision she makes. She doesn't see a world in which she's wrong. She's always right, and she believes that. So when her whole world is shattered, all of that comes into question. Where's my dad? I don't know. What is that? For me, it was quite funny watching the show back because I started to feel bad for Hannah when throughout filming, I was so in Bailey's head, I didn't care. <laughs> so when I was watching the show, I was like, oh no, poor Hannah, I feel so bad. <laughs> Bailey's treating her so badly. But when you're in it, when you're in that headspace, you just, it, you, you've got blinkers on, you just can't see anything else. Good morning, Bailey. Dad, I'm gonna be late. How about we start with good morning? And then Jen, I know like you are very maternal and Hannah is not super maternal when we come into this. Did you feel you had to curb a lot of that? Was that was there like an internal fight going on within you? It was, I very much had a fight to not be myself and to stick to Hannah. Um, and Gowrie is incredibly magnetic and lovable. And I have such a desire to take care of her and be there for her. And even her Bailey, as snarky as she could be, um, you know, you can't help but just feel like, oh, come here, sweetie. You look like you need a snack and a hug. Um, and that is not Hannah. Hannah is fumbling. She has no idea what she's doing. She has no concept of how to give a teenager space, when to come in, how to um, how to be not a friend and hold a boundary. All of those things, um, those were things that I had to remind myself constantly that she's not there. 